in the basement of Urahara. Urahara stood at the door, waiting for everyone to gather. Before opening it, he explained how it worked, and handed out headphones to ensure constant communication. Before you leave, remember you'll need to run a lot to get out of the Dange, and reach the Soul Society, which should be at the entrance door, the former captain said as he began to open the door. Don't worry, thanks to Goku-sensei's training, we can run a lot, Gohan's classmates thought, sweating as they recalled their gym teacher's exhausting warm-ups. As the door opened, they all dashed inside, chased by a strange black spherical figure. No one paid it any mind, as they were moving too fast to be caught. After a long run, they saw a light at the end of the tunnel. In a few minutes, they were plummeting into one of the districts of the Soul Society. Most of them used their control of Ki and Yatsu Ray to descend quickly without crashing, except for Yurayu, who had to be held by Goku's arm. Upon arrival, the inhabitants of the slums gathered to see the newcomers, who wore clothes unlike the traditional feudal Japanese attire. Some stared curiously at Haribel, who wore white clothes similar to the Shinigamis, to prevent them from discovering her hollow part. She adjusted her collar, covered the hole in her stomach with bandages, and stood behind her fiancé. Mr. Chad, is that you? A little boy from the crowd asked. Chad looked surprised until the boy revealed he was the soul trapped in the bird. Chad went to talk to him while everyone else prepared to send a message. Elsewhere in the soul society, stop harassing me, a girl needs privacy, an annoyed Rangaku said to an equally irritated Toshiro. And do you think I want to spend all day following you while you drink sake? I'm just following orders, the white-haired captain replied, a vein of annoyance visible on his forehead. Before Rangaku could respond, her phone vibrated. She took it out and saw a message from a sexy monkey man. The wallpaper showed Goku in a Halloween costume as Tarzan, embraced by Rangaku in a sexy witch costume, Yoruchi in a parka suit with feline parts and Haribel in a skeleton costume. They all had nosebleeds from seeing Goku's costume in detail. The message read, Rangaku, we arrived. When we're all inside it will be your time to escape. I hope you left that counterside capsule with Rukia so she wouldn't get bored in prison. With love, Goku. Excited by the news, Rangaku hugged the first person she saw, which happened to be Momo, who was left confused and dizzy by Rangaku's shaking. Why are you so excited? Toshiro asked, a drop of sweat on his head. The man of my dreams is here, and I'll see him soon, Rangaku said, calming down and hugging Momo like a stuffed animal. That's incredible. I'll soon meet the man you fell in love with, Momo said, recovering from her friend's emotional outburst. And since when does Rangaku have a boyfriend? I need to find out more after the captain's meeting, Toshiro thought, now filled with questions. Back with the sons. Once Ched finished talking to the boy, he rejoined his friends, and they headed to the door without any issues. However, a giant named Jurambo blocked their access to the Suridi. You shall not pass, the giant roared, pulling out a large axe, and throwing it at Goku. Goku stopped the attack with his hand effortlessly. Jurambo, surprised but undeterred, grabbed another axe, and aimed at Gohan. But the result was the same. With a look of complicity, both sons lifted the giant's weapons and him, slamming him to the ground, and disarming him. The people on the street were stunned to see the guardian of the doors defeated so easily. A few minutes later, Orheim healed Jurambo's small wounds, and he gratefully decided to open the door for them. However, Captain Jin appeared on the other side. Wow, the powerful Jurambo letting anyone in. What a disappointment, Jin said. But Captain, Jurambo began. But Jin's sword stretched, hitting him on the shoulder, and making him release the doors. Jin extended his sword to strike Gohan. But Gohan covered Zainjetsu with a little key, destroying Jin's weapon. Jin was shocked, his eyes wide. But things got worse as someone sneaked through the door before it closed. Your key is strange, both evil, and good. But for trying to hurt my son, I will punish you. Goku said, his face stern. Jin was taken aback by the presence of the older son. He quickly tried to activate his shikai again. But Goku, moving faster than the speed of sound, twisted Jin's wrist, disarming him. Goku then delivered a hard blow to Jin's stomach, causing him to spit blood. Although the Saiyan wanted to engage in a long fight with the captain, he couldn't risk ruining the plan and angering Yuruchi, something he definitely wanted to avoid. Goku grabbed the captain by the neck and slammed him to the ground with three hard blows, leaving Jin nearly unconscious. Look, although I'd like to fight you, I have to stick to a plan. So, I'll let you tell your friends about my arrival, Goku said seriously. Okay, let go of me, and I'll leave. But what's your name? The captain asked, clearly in pain. I'm Son Goku, a Saiyan and a substitute Shinigami. 
And who said you would walk? Goku replied with a Vegeta-like smile, making Jin feel fear for the first time in many years. Meanwhile, at the captain's meeting, Rangiku thought, blushing, I feel like my cute Goku deserves an award tonight. She had a feeling her fiancé had made someone who hurt her feel pain. Why is she blushing? She's been acting weirder than usual. Toshiro thought as he accompanied her to the captain's meeting. Despite not being a lieutenant, Rangiku had to attend the meetings to ensure the captain's follow-up, which annoyed her because she always fell asleep during them. In the meeting room, all the captains and lieutenants were in their places, ready to start the meeting, but Captain Ichimaru was missing, which was unusual. Does anyone know where Captain Jin Ichimaru is? An annoyed Yamamoto asked, hating tardiness. He said he was going for a quick walk at the city gates and would return shortly, Izumo replied, explaining the delay. A minute hadn't passed when Captain Towson began looking at the ceiling for no apparent reason, drawing everyone's attention. What's going on Towson? Kamamura asked his friend. Don't you hear a strange whistle in the air? The blind captain asked. I don't hear anything. Izumo began to say until, crack poon, suddenly, the ceiling collapsed, letting sunlight flood the room. The place was filled with debris, and strange things happened. Kaioriku fell on his lieutenant Nanao, who knocked him out with a super blow. Debris fell on Kamamura, breaking his helmet and revealing his werewolf face. Anahara was accidentally pushed by her lieutenant Isane, causing her to fall into Zeraki's chest, who said nothing while the rest were surprised, except Rangaku, who smiled, detecting the weak key signature in the rubble. The culprit for the roof collapse was Jin, his face beaten, full of bruises, and missing several teeth. His sword was destroyed, and his clothes were torn as if attacked by a wild animal. Everyone wondered who could do that to a captain. Captain Ichimaru, who did this to you? A shocked Izumo asked, scared to see his captain in such a state. Rai Akas they are here? Go Ku Jin managed to say before losing consciousness, having experienced the Saiyan's power firsthand. Yamamoto couldn't believe what had happened. How could a human destroy a captain in such a short time? This situation made him very angry, and he gave the following order. Find the Ryakas who did this. Don't neglect anything because a single person may have done this, the commander said. Do you think only one person defeated Captain Jin? Izumo asked. He mentioned a name before fainting. Also, a year ago, we felt a great peak of energy in an unknown place, so I don't rule out anything, Yamamoto said. Looking at all his captains, but realizing one was missing, the largest one. Rangaku was extremely happy inside that her beloved was here, and had beaten the person, who broke her heart in the past. She also noticed someone was missing among the captains. Does anyone know where Captain Zeraki and Lieutenant Yachiru are? Yamamoto asked, pinching the bridge of his nose, knowing the answer. Well, he got excited when he heard about a big peak of energy. He couldn't resist the urge and ran out to look for the Ryoka, Anahara said, pointing to the wall behind her, which was destroyed in the shape of Kempichi's body. I want all of you to start looking for this Ryoka now. Release your squads and close everything so that no one enters or leaves. Now, the old captain ordered while some helped Jin to the hospital after his tremendous beating. This is definitely not part of my plan, but a counter time will not stop the inevitable. Azen thought, sweating nervously because he hadn't expected his accomplice to end up like this. Meanwhile with Kempichi, the sadistic captain, along with his loyal lolly, was running at full speed through the Soul Society, eager to find Goku and have a fight that would excite him and hopefully allow him to release all his power. Wow Kenny, you're excited? The cheerful Yatru said, clinging to the captain's neck and enjoying the breeze. That's right, if what that girl said is correct, I'm going to have fun for the first time in a long time. Zeraki replied with a wild smile, increasing his speed. With Goku, there are many signatures of powerful energies in this place. I think I will be able to fight someone interesting. But first, I must remember Yuruchi's plan, Goku thought, recalling the discussion from two weeks ago. Flashback. Under the Urahara store, Everyone who would go to the Soul Society was gathered in their casual clothes. Yuruchi stood in front of them with an easel holding the different sheets of her plan. Well, we need to review the plan once again. The former captain began, before noticing that her plans had been replaced by Rukia's crude drawings. Rangiku had asked Rukia to back up the plan in case something happened to the original, which had indeed occurred during a fight between the lieutenant and the vast lord. The plans were destroyed and replaced with Rukia's drawings. Ahem. Due to special circumstances, I will have to use the replacement of the original plan, Yoruchi said, a tick in her eye as she tried to decipher the drawings. The first page showed nine rabbits with different traits. Rukia's rabbit had a princess headband, 
Gohans had a king's crown, Orheims had butterfly wings, Chads had white and red muscles, Uriyus was dressed as Robin Hood, comma, Tatsukis had fire in its hands and legs, Yuruchis had feline tail and ears, Rangakus wore military clothes, Haribles was disguised as a shark, and Gokus was painted gold. Everyone but Goku had huge drops of sweat at the sight of these representations. Some found it funny, while others, especially Goku's fiancés, had ticks in their eyes, displeased with what they saw. Does anyone understand these scribbles? Yuruchi asked, making Rukia angry at the criticism of her drawings. I do. From what I see, the plan is for Gohan or me to enter the Soul Society to create a distraction drawing everyone's focus. Meanwhile, the rest will be shot by a cannon into the complex, then split into three teams to cause more chaos as we move towards Rukia, who will be saved by Gohan. And then, they fly into the sunset, Goku said, puzzled by the last part where Gohan and Rukia's rabbits were flying. Everyone was left speechless, surprised that Goku could understand the poorly drawn plan. Rukia however, was thrilled that her boyfriend's father appreciated her drawings. I think spending so much time with Rangaku, Yuruchi, Haribel, Urahara, and Oraheim has affected my father a little, Gohan thought, knowing that his future mother's and his father's best friend had helped him mature, but Oraheim always kept him, childish enough to understand Rukia's drawings. Apparently, I will be the one to enter first, so I will meet with Rangaku in sight until you arrive, Gohan. We'll go with someone unknown, Haribel, Chad, and Tatsuki will be a team, while Yurayu, Oraheim, and Yuruchi will be the other, Goku said, looking at the positions of the rabbits. Thank you for your explanation dear, now you must understand that it will be inevitable to enter into combat with the Shinigami. I know you trained, but I don't want you to face a captain because they are completely unpredictable. If it's unavoidable, we will get you out of trouble, Yuruchi said, ending the meeting, and giving her fiancé a kiss for helping with the translation of Rukia's drawings. End of flashback. Well, I hope to meet a captain. They must undoubtedly be very powerful, Goku said with a cheerful smile as he took a random route to the prison area. With the others outside the Siridae, Oraheim was still healing the giant when several alarms sounded inside the place, followed by a powerful dome-shaped Riyatsu barrier covering the Siridae. Yuruchi was not surprised, as she had anticipated this. It seems your father has already alerted the Shinigami, the Catwoman said, looking at her future stepson. So it seems. Now how do we enter? And where is the cannon from the plan? Gohan asked, recalling the plan. An acquaintance of mine will lend us hers. His name is Kyukuku, and you have to look for it on the outskirts of the district, Yuruchi said, already imagining everyone's reaction to Kyukuku's eccentric tastes. Once Jiranbo was healed, everyone left the door and advanced through the district until a strange guy with black hair, wearing a headscarf and robust, tried to attack Gohan, accusing the Shinigami of arrogance and selfishness. This reaction confused everyone, although Yuruchi knew that the guy spoke some truth, despite not all Shinigami being like that, Gohan simply asked the guy to calm down, but he didn't. After failing to tap Gohan for the fifteenth time, he gave up and ran away, leaving a confused Gohan. What a strange guy, Gohan said, his typical innocent face not understanding anything. Haribel approached Gohan, her expression thoughtful. Although I do not approve of that guy attacking you. He is partly right by saying that the Shinigami are arrogant. However, you and your father are different. Gohan smiled, he he, thank you, Mom Haribel. He appreciated being recognized in such a way, just as his father's fiancés always did. Meanwhile, in a secret location, Captain Azen was meditating on the next phase of his plan. Despite Jin's defeat being a setback, it wouldn't prevent him from unleashing the secret weapon he had hidden. Over the years, it had grown more powerful, but also more unstable. Nothing will stop me, I will achieve my goals, and you will help me, Aizen said, looking at the human figure inside the tank, wearing a strange controlling necklace. Even though I can't control you completely, I'm only interested in your destructive power. Elsewhere, Rangaku was preparing for her mission. Already, here I go, she said, putting a large backpack on her back. The backpack contained various items for the mission, which would take at least two days. She had planned locations, where the Shinigami never watched but she had a secret spot to spend the night with her love. As she was about to leave, her watchful captain, Toshiro, stopped her. Where are you supposed to go with that backpack, Rangaku? He asked, blocking her path. Isn't it obvious? I'm going to look for the Ryakus, and I'm carrying a little food in case I get hungry on the way, she replied cheerfully, using a poor excuse. 
Let me see what you have. Toshiro demanded, extending his hand. I don't want to. You don't understand privacy, Rangiku said, blushing. She didn't want him to see what she was carrying. They started a tug of war with a backpack until Rangiku stumbled, and Toshiro found its contents. A strange capsule, scented candles, three bottles of sake, a bag of fries, and something he couldn't mention for her pleasure. Toshiro's face turned red, realizing she planned a night of passion. Rangiku grabbed her backpack and ran, but Toshiro caught up with her on a balcony. Rangiku, why have you been acting weird all day? Why didn't you seem worried about Captain Jin? And what's with all the stuff in your backpack? He demanded. Nothing will change if I hide it from you, she said, carefree. I'm on the side of the Ryoka to free my apprentice from this senseless execution. One of them, my future husband, made me very happy by defeating Jin. As for the rest, I'll tell you when you're older, she added mischievously. Toshiro was shocked. His former lieutenant was siding with the humans and planned to marry one, which was forbidden. He also realized she and Rukia had both given their powers to Goku and Gohan. Did Rukia really give her powers twice? Toshiro asked, unsure whether to turn her in or help her. Of course not. We both gave our powers to Goku and Gohan to purify the hollows. It was Rukia's idea to take all the blame, Rangiku said nonchalantly. Rangiku, you're in serious trouble. You must tell the truth, surrender, and hope for a lenient punishment, Toshiro warned, reaching for his sword. I won't. Everything is going as planned and it's time to leave, Rangiku said, changing her stance. Toshiro drew his sword, but Rangiku dodged his attack and pushed him back with a powerful kick. Goodbye, Captain. Maybe we'll see each other on my wedding day. Teokin, she shouted, using a technique she learned from Goku to blind Toshiro with a flash of light. With Toshiro distracted, Rangiku activated her key and flew at full speed towards Goku's energy. Phase 1 finished. Now I'm coming for you, honey, she said with a big smile as she soared through the skies undetected.